Welcome to the Portage County Safety Council podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's safety chat. Hi, this is Nick Coyo with the Portage County Safety Council, and I'm here with Mike Thompson. Mike, how are you today? Good. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing good. You know, as we begin the 2020 year, a lot of companies are going through the process of goal setting and just looking at forecasting what the future is going to hold for them. And not only for production, but safety. Safety goals are becoming more and more popular. The problem with goals is that sometimes we abandon them or we get frustrated with the process. Absolutely. Way too early. And, and there's, there's actually a good reason for this. It's called the diffusion of innovation model. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes giving our listeners a tool that they can use to better understand what is actually happening in their company. And what they have found with this study and the diffusion of innovation model is that people adopt and accept your goals and ideas and changes in different phases. And I think a great example that I've heard when people talk about this model is think about the iPhone. When the iPhone came out, there was a bunch of people in New York City standing out on the sidewalk for three days in the freezing cold waiting for the phone. Not me. Yeah. (laughs) And there's a lot of people are saying, not me, right? Those people are crazy. But believe it or not, Apple was expecting that because they knew that those are the innovators. Those are the people who are going to spearhead this release of this product, and that's what's going to make the sale for them. And it's the same thing with a safety program. You have to identify who your innovators are. And that's that's how the diffusion of innovation model identifies them. They say these people are the ones, are the innovators in your company, and they're going to latch on to whatever you sell to them. I call these people your safety champions. Yeah. You're looking for the people who are always behind you on a safety program that are willing to try something new. Now, the downside is they're only 2.5% of your population. Right. It's a very small group. It's a seed. It's yes, a seed. It's a seed. But those are the people that when you come up with your new program, your new goal, whatever it is, and this works for everything from safety to uh, production to quality, all of that has the same diffusion of innovation model. We're looking at it from a safety standpoint. So you find your safety champions, the guys or gals that support you and say, here's what we're doing. Yeah. And here's a quick tip. I hear all the time in committee meetings and working with different people. We even interviewed a consultant lately and she even mentioned this, like you want decision makers in there. And I disagree with that because what I realized is position and a lot of corporate cultures doesn't equal influence. And so you might have Bob who's a maintenance guy, but for some weird sixth sense kind of reason, everyone listens to that guy. Right. It doesn't matter. And and, he's like the gatekeeper. And he's the one who's willing to try something new. And if he's okay with it, everyone else is okay with it. So we got to get that innovator started with your goals. So once you set that goal in your team meeting, you find those innovators and you start selling it to them and getting them to start with it. Absolutely. Once we have our innovators identified and worked with, then we move into the phase of the early adopters. And these are the people who were not going to stand out in New York City in the freezing cold for three days for the iPhone. But they were at the Sprint and Verizon store the next day to pick it up. Exactly. Um, being the right. second day with the with the phone in their hand, right? Right. And so those are the people in your company who aren't the ones who say, look at me. I want to start. I want to be the first person to do it. But they're the ones that when you look at them and say, hey, what do you think about this? Are you willing to try this? They say, sure, I'll give it a chance. And so you got to identify that portion of your population as you start the implementation of your safety and health program, whatever change or program you're rolling out. And they account for about 13.5% of your workforce. So really in that first window of the rollout, you're getting 16% of your population to really be supportive of this. And when you hear that, you go, wow, this is not going to be easy. Think about that, Nick. Your innovators are two out of 100 or one out of 50. That's how small it is. And then you go to phase two into this, the early adopters. You're talking now, if you combine the two, you said 16%. So- 16 out of 100, eight out of every 50. So if you have a workforce of 200 people, you're lucky to find 30 people that are going to be on board with this. That are going to be excited about it. Yes. So, so what I want you to understand is don't get frustrated by the uphill battle initially because this is just a cultural thing that exists in our world. This is in every project we roll out. You're going to have this. So you just have to identify who those categories are and work with them. Because you're going to, once you can get the innovators to, to try it, the early adopters will say, sure, I'll give this a shot. And they'll start working with that. And then you move it into your phase three of the rollout, which is where you get the early majority. Those are the people who are cautious, 
but aren't saying, no, I'm not going to do that. They're cautiously optimistic. They're going to sit back and see what everybody else who's going down this road is doing. And then they're going to get involved with it. And we call that the early majority. And there's a great TED Talk, Nick, on leadership. I can't even remember the guy's name off the top of my head. But he actually shows like this hippie festival. This guy dancing. I don't know if you've ever seen it. (laughs) It's only a few minutes long. If you know what I'm talking about, just Google TED Talk leadership and you'll find this. It's unbelievable. And this guy made the case. And this is what this is saying here. He said, followers don't follow leaders like we've been told our whole life. They follow first followers. So what actually happened in this video is they had this one guy doing this crazy dance. And everyone's like, look at that crazy guy. He's doing something none of us are doing. But part of me kind of wants to dance like him. He's wild and free, right? right? And so what happens is the second guy or gal comes up. There's two or three of them now. And the next thing you know, the early adopters start pouring in. And then once the early adopters, there's 12 or 15 out of this crowd. And next thing you know, here comes the early majority. Now, literally hundreds of people are coming in and dancing wild and free like this one guy was. So the guy made the point. He's like, Followers don't just follow leaders, they follow your early adopters. And that's what big companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon have done. They know how to grab and market to those people. And that's what you just need to do in your company. You have to market this. And what happens is, is we go out and often we fight what we call the laggards. And we're going to talk about them in a minute. But those are the people who fight the system. And so when you roll out a new program, you know who that fight's going to be with. And you often focus your attention on that person. Don't even deal with that right now. Deal with your early, your innovators, your early adopters. Then the early majority is going to join in with you and you're going to have success because that's another 34% or in total terms, 50% of the company on board with this now. Yeah. 50% it halfway through. Yeah. Halfway through 50%. And so what we have to do is focus our attention on the innovators, early adopters, and early majority. The rest will come. And you can't see this because it's a podcast. You can't see the graph we're dealing with right now. But it's a basic bell curve. And once we get past the early majority, we're at the peak. It is all downhill from here. Because once the early majority and 50% of the company is on board, the late majority looks at it and says, well, this is how it's going to be. I'm not excited about it at first, but this is what our culture or what our program is going to exist as. So sure, I'll buy into it. You're still going to have angry Steve over here fighting it, right? We're going to tell you to talk about him in a minute. But when you can get that late majority to say, sure, I'm on board with this. That puts us at another 34% engaged in the process. Think about end of phase three, you have 50% of the company. So what happens? It becomes the new policy or change becomes a part of culture. It becomes the way of life, the way of doing business. So now it's a no-brainer for the late majority, the other 34%. At the end of that fourth phase, you You now have have 84. 84% 84 of your company engaged. By phase four, you only have 16% left to deal with, but you have the majority. And you know what? The laggards are the people who fight it to the end, who always say, it's a bad idea. This isn't how we've always done it. And you know who those individuals are. They still do this with any program that exists in your company. That's just part of the process that you have to deal with. But I see so many safety people burn out a program or give up on things early because they can't get the laggards engaged. That laggard population is your last worry. Focus on what works well for you because that uphill climb of the bell curve is going to be much easier Instead of trying to run up the hill, it's a roller coaster now, and you actually have the tracks engaging and pulling you up to the top. So when you get to the top, you have all this population behind you, the weight of the weight of the roller coaster ready to go, and it's downhill. And when you have the downhill ride, that makes life so much easier for you. Absolutely. The big picture is adopt a long-term view of safety. Don't just try new trendy things. You could try those things, but if they don't happen within the first three months or even year, it's okay. Because at some point, your culture is going to grasp and every incremental change has a big outcome. It's kind of funny because I used to laugh about this guy all the time. But I heard a quote someone posted on Facebook or something a while back or a video of, I think it was Tony Robbins. He said, every small adjustment has a big impact. He said, if I go golfing and I turn my golf club two millimeters to the left, I'm going to shank it when I'm driving. In the short term, two millimeters is nothing. But at the end, it could be several yards to the left or to the right. And so, but you have to let that process go, you know, so think long-term and focus on the pieces that you can control. Focus on your early innovators and your early adopters and focus on your early majority. Focus on the front half of your 50%. The rest will come with it. And that's how you're going to get your programs to succeed in 2020. And some of you can relate to this, being a Browns fan, 
first year coach. We're already talking about getting him fired. Don't take the same view for safety as you have with the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be frustrated every time you want to get new staff and right. replace your staff every year. Yeah, so quit <laughs> scrapping the program right. and stick with it. You've stick got to it. look at the long run. So identify your early, identify your innovators, then get your early adopters in place. Your early majority will, will kind of rise to the occasion, and you're already halfway there. So we hope that this helps. We're going to do some more series on this type of stuff as the year goes on because we want to provide you with tools, not only on just how policies work or what regulations exist. We want to help you with your culture now too. And we want to really dive in to some of these real life tools that you can use. So take a look at the diffusion of innovation model. I think it's going to make your program so much stronger in 2020. Everyone be safe. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. For more episodes, check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbeam, or Stitcher. To get new episodes sent directly to your phone or smart device, be sure to subscribe. To learn more about how your company can earn up to a 4% Ohio BWC premium rebate by becoming an active member of the Portage County Safety Council, please visit our website at www.portagecountysafetycouncil.wordpress.com. The preceding information is for entertainment purposes only. Views expressed may not reflect the views of any affiliated or sponsoring individuals or organizations. Listeners should carefully weigh information provided and seek advice from an appropriate professional before implementing. Listener discretion is advised.